Hey guys, Joe Pizinski here with Advanced Innovations. Uh, before I start this week, I got to give a big shout out and a thank you to Pierre's Garage. Uh, gave me an endorsement, and I'm getting some of his people over here leaving me some good comments and some great feedback. I appreciate the viewers, so Pierre. I appreciate the endorsement. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, just like Chuck did over there at Outside Screwball. Thank you, Chuck. If you're one of my subscribers, or if you're one of my viewers, and you haven't watched either of these guys. Visit Pierre's Garage, visit Outside Screwball, take a look at what they got going on. A lot of good information on YouTube. All right, before I get into anything, I got to share something with you. It's an Instagram shout out to this guy right here. If you have an Instagram account, let me get closer so you can get it. All right, I'm not going to stay on it long. Hit the pause button, go back and check it out. This young man's name is Josh DiCarlo. He is the son of of a pair of very good friends of my wife and myself and what this boy does with the camera is just absolutely beautiful he's got a great eye and when you see raw talent like that you just gotta pat him on the back and bump him up so if you have an Instagram account go check him out this boy has just got so much talent like uh, Mr. Crispin over there in the UK the Rolls Royce machinist 20 years old God if I had an apprentice like that I would say Fantastic. I'm going to retire in a year because you're going to be taking my job. So if you haven't seen Mr. Crispin's work, go take a look at him too. Amazing. Anyway, if you have a shop in your garage, if you're working in a job shop environment, sooner or later, you're going to get a job of a thousand pieces or you're going to have to work second shift and follow somebody that has provided you with something to work on, second operation, and you're going to have to squeeze all of these pieces. And God forbid you got to do them one at a time because that's not going to be very cost effective. You're going to want to put three, four pieces in your vise at the same time. But if you've done this, you know that's a really risky proposition because ultimately the two on the end are nice and tight or the two in the left side are nice and tight and one's going to walk out, hit that cutter, fly cutter, end mill, whatever, boom. You're going to ruin your night, going to ruin the part. Not good, but you're going to remember that that happened. I'm going to show you a couple of tricks on how to hold slightly irregular parts together at the same time in the vise. And then I'm going to show you a fantastic trick for holding grossly irregular parts all together at the same time in the same vise. Let's take a look. All right, guys, here's your problem. You have a bunch of these parts you need to deck the top off of or drill a hole in them. Yet, the sizes are marked right on there. 499, 93, 90, and 488. Now, that's quite a gap. So if you put these in here and you squeeze them, I'm going to guess two out of the four are going to be tight and the rest are going to float. That's tight. Nope, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. So this vise is nice and tight and it's not giving you the kick that you need to pick up on the parts. You could take the two biggest ones if you wanted to, move them to the outside, and you might get lucky enough to have this jaw kick to hold them. Okay, that's tight but you only got two pieces. Let's say you wanted to run those four pieces. This is a simple trick if the parts are close enough in size. Take a piece of cardboard. Take a piece of cardboard along the front jaw. Crush down on it. All right, nice and tight. All right, there you go. It's all nice and tight. This trick works okay if the parts are relatively close within a couple thou in size the cardboard will compress enough to allow adequate pressure on all the pieces. If you decide to make yourself a soft jaw, you'll notice that these holes are a little bit higher from this edge to the center as they are from this edge to the center. Do not reproduce it this way. Take this distance right here and make that symmetrical, like I did on this one. If you put them back to back, the holes line up, but it's taller. But if you turn it upside down, the holes still line up. Now what this does for you is allows you to make a soft jaw that when you're done with one side, you can flip it over and use it again and it still registers against the bottom of the vise. If you take a standard hard jaw and reverse it, you will get a little extra height out of the jaw, but you won't have anything underneath the bottom unless you slip a parallel in there. So if you make a soft jaw, make it symmetrical about the large dimension, not the small dimension. Let's take a look at what happens if you have grossly different parts. OK, 
Okay, guys, this is a very vertical round setup, and these pins are four different diameters. Now, if you were to close this jaw on these pins, you got three that are loose, one that's tight. Now, these parts could be square, they could be rectangular, they could be anything, but for sake of this demonstration, I want to use four different size pins and show you how I overcome this obstacle. This is a setup that I use all the time. Tight, 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 tight. This forms a triangle, this forms a triangle, two points, one point, another triangle. No matter what happens here, these guys are going to take up the slack. Tight, 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 tight. You can do this all day. This guy here is a great little attachment. I've never taken the time to pin it together or hinge it or fix it to a standard size plate because everything I do with this is always different. Now I know the center lines are going to vary this way, but they're not going to vary this way. So if you've got to hold round pins and actually set your offsets or indicate each one, do what you got to do. But this proves that you can hold four different size pieces of material in one setup rather easily. All right, well, that little toggle swing bar trick, that is so versatile. I have made so many of those little finger blocks, some with cutouts on them for rounds, some with double moons on them on the front for hitting square parts. What you do with that concept is entirely up to you. But the setup that you just saw that held those four different diameter bars, and they were 25 thou difference each. So from side to side, you had at least a 75 thou variation in the diameter of those parts. And that V-block jaw, that works very well, uh, you know, as well if you're holding round, square stock, whatever you got to do. That's all I got for you. That's a great trick. Make one of those. You can put it together pretty quick, pretty easy. Thank you once again to all my subscribers. All the comments that keep coming in keeps me inspired. Uh, this has gone places I had no idea it would go. And thank you very much for your confidence, your comments, feedback, thumbs up, everything in general. All right, until I post another one, Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.